Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on a prospective case control study we conducted in Magaria, Niger, to estimate the protective efficacy of SMC. First, I would like to remind that SMC is a preventive measure against malaria targeting children aged 3 to 59 months with the highest risk of malaria. A three-day course of medicine is given once a month for up to four months during the high transmission rainy season. On the first day, children receive a dose of sulfadoxin, pyrimetamine, and amodiakin and then subsequent dose of amodiakin on the next two days. Since 2012, the WHO recommended SMC as it was shown to reduce malaria incidence by 75% in a series of trials. SMC is recommended in the area in dark orange on this map where malaria transmission is highly seasonal with short rainy season compared to the blue zone where the transmission season is longer. In cooperation with the Ministry of Public Health of Niger, MSF started implementing SMC in 2013 in Magaria that you can see in the red spot on the map. Between 2013 and 2016, on average, more than 110,000 children aged 3 to 59 months received SMC each month between July and October. That's the high transmission season. However, in 2014 and 2015, despite a large scale investment in the implementation program, the result expect expected in terms of reduction of hospitalization and consultation have not been observed. The number of cases treated for malaria both in hospital and outpatient department has increased. Surveillance data suggested potential problem with the protective effectiveness and low protection beyond three weeks. What could explain this bad result? Many hypotheses were then suggested. Increased incoming patients from non-covered areas or poor adherence of patients to the SMC or a particular severe transmission of malaria. Another hypothesis was a potential reduction in the protective eff efficacy of SMC drugs due to parasite resistance or pest related factors such as malnutrition. In terms of delivery strategy, SM MSF used two strategies in 2016. In the DOT zone, that's the DOT strategy, the dose of SP, that's sulfadoxin, and first dose of amodiakin were directly observed. The non-DOT strategy were simpler. That's just the caregiver received entire SPIQ, that's sulfadoxin, and amodiakin, blister pack, and the first day doses were not directly observed. During the 2016 season, we initiated a case control study to estimate the protective effectiveness of SMC against developing clinical malaria in DOTS, that's the direct observed treatment, and the non-DOT strategy zone. In each strategy zone, we recruited case at one health center and two health posts in Magaria Health District. For each case recruited, there were three community controls matched by age, village of origin, and date. We define a case as any child aged three to 59 months with fever and a history of fever in the previous 24 hours and a positive malaria rapid diagnosis test. The control were children with, without fever or a history of fever in the 24 hours preceding the recruitment, or children with fever but with a negative malaria test. We asked caregivers about SMC receipts or collected 
and collected blood, capillary blood sample for tick and thin smear and some blood to estimate plasma le level of desertyl amodiakin, which I will discuss the use later. We conducted univariate and multivariate comparison between case and controls by conditional logistic regression. We then estimate the relative risk of developing malaria from the odd ratio obtained. To gather objective information about adherence, we had to describe the pharmacokinetics of amodiakin in this population in ideal condition. We conducted a sub-study on 165 children to whom we gave all three doses of amodiakin at home, directly observed under ideal condition. Our goal, was to construct, our goal was to construct a typical curve of the elimination of desertyl amodiakin, which is an active metabolite of amodiakin, in the setting of SMC. To do that, we collected blood samples in these children at a specific time over six weeks following the administration of amodiakin. Once the pharmacokinetics curve was constructed, we compare it with the sample taken in the main case control study. The assays and modeling were done by Joel Turning Group in Bangkok. Now, let's look at the results. The graph on the left shows the weekly recruitment rates of participants since the beginning of the study. The study period was between August 1st and December 2nd, 2016. The map on the right show the village of origin of case, and the area above is the dot zone, and the area below is the non dots. The boundary line is the border with Nigeria. Here's the baseline description of the, of the study participants. In the dot zone, control were more likely to have received SMC, both for children who had a program card and also those self-reporting receipt of SMC. Kids were more likely to be enrolled in a nutritional program. Reported bed net usage was high in both groups. Otherwise, both cases and control were typical for the region. And in the not dot zone, control were also more likely to have received SMC, but the difference was smaller than in the dot zone. Otherwise, the children were largely similar to the children enrolled in the dot zone. Here are the main results of the study. In the whole study area, if we only consider children who have a card proving that they received SMC, regardless of the strategy, the protective effectiveness was 85%, which is really good. But when we add in the children who didn't have a card but reported to have received SMC, the effectiveness dropped to 50%. This raised concern as to whether children caregivers who self-reported receipt of SMC were actually telling the truth. Now, comparing the dot zone to the non-dot zone, there were some highly significant differences. When we look at card-proven receipt of SMC, the effectiveness of SMC in the dot zone was 97%, while in the non-dot zone, it was only 60%. Now, when we add in the children who self-reported receipt of SMC, in the dot zone, the effectiveness remains very high, 89%. But in the non-dot zone, it drops to 21%, with confidence interval that crosses the null value. Importantly, there were no significant difference by age, sex, and nutritional status. In general, this result proved that SMC works, at least when we directly observed the dose of SP, that's sulfadoxin, and the first dose of amodiakin. At the same time, they raised questions with adherence or subsequent days at home. 
So to know whether children that take SMC like, to know whether children take SMC like they were supposed to, here are the results of the pharmacokinetic sub-study. We fitted a pharmacokinetic model for amodiakin on top and desetyl amodiakin on the bottom. You can see that if children receive SMC with all three doses observed, they all have a detectable level of desetyl amodiakin in the blood, even at six weeks after the first dose. But in the case control study, in both the dot zone and the non-dot zone alike, over 80% of children who reported correct adherence at home had desetyl amodiakin level below the fifth percentile on the population pharmacokinetics curve for the given day since taking SMC. That means they are below the lowest gray shaded area on the bottom figure. This result clear, clearly indicates that many children were not taking their medicine as they should or as they reported. To conclude, the protective effectiveness of SMC was acceptable and better when first dose is directly observed. Future campaigns should therefore use a DOT strategy for the first dose. But our result also suggested problem with correct, correct adherence to a three-day course of amodiakin at home. The obvious question is then whether the effectiveness of SMC that we observed is due to SP alone, that's sulfadoxin alone. Finally, I would like to mention that Médecins Sans Frontières led the way with implementing SMC in Niger and now and has now largely handed off to other partners. But the fact that new implementers are in place means there may, be, there may well be new challenges and that MSF will continue to be on the front line for curative care if SMC does not work well. We wish to express our sincere appreciation to all partners in this study, especially the staff of Margaria Health District and the MSF Operational Center of Geneva. Thank you very much for your attention.